Welcome to Cooler Talk, sports fans. I got a great show coming up. Uh, we got a big leaguer in the studio, Jamie D'Antona. Uh, he actually played for Wake Forest, was the ACC leader in slugging and RBI percentage. Uh, he debuted with the, with the Diamondbacks, Arizona Diamondbacks. So he'll share his thoughts on game six as the Rangers take on the Cardinals. All right, folks, we got Jamie D'Antona in the studio here. Uh, greatly appreciate it, Jamie, you stopping by here. No Welcome to Cooler Talk. Um, we'll ask a little bit of, we'll ask a couple questions. Uh, I like it because it's on the eve of Game 6, which is tonight World Series. Uh, the Rangers take on the Cardinals. So Jamie's going to drop by and basically talk a little bit about the differences between he's played in the J Japanese League, uh, he's played for the Diamondbacks a little bit. So we're going to ask him some questions um, and you know, make, he can make the show a little bit more interesting. So right off the bat, Jamie, um, you played in Japan. Uh, talk a little bit about the, the differences in your experiences down there and how it differs from Major League Baseball. Um, just, you know, overall significant differences or just a snapshot of it? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's still baseball no matter where, where you go. Um, Japan is more small ball. Every time a leadoff guy gets on, we bunted. Okay. Um, it was more of playing for one run each inning than trying to get that big inning like we do over here. Um, pitchers can spot a lot easier. Um, hitters don't hit for much power. That's why the foreigners are, are taken and brought over there because we're the, we're the ones that usually have that power source. Um, so you're saying we have more sluggers in Major League? We have bigger people. That's bigger just what people. it comes down oh, to. Okay, so now we got a little cultural differences? Yeah, I mean, everybody over there is, a lot of the players were pretty much the same size, 5'10", 5'11", 150 to 175 pounds. Wow, I think I'm starting to find, actually understand why Godzilla was called Godzilla. He was unusually big. Matt too was big. Um, there's a couple guys over there right now. Um, I mean, heck, you Darvish is going to come over next year, and he's probably 6'5", but he's skinny as all heck. Um, they, don't, they don't have the type of food that we have to gain that much weight. Yeah. They're more based on smaller portions and much healthier food. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that in the, in the stands, uh, folks. Jamie's dad actually went over to a game, and he talked about his experience. He said people were eating edamame and like rice as opposed to here we got nachos and, and beer and <laughs> we had everybody had beer over there also but it was cool over there because I, mean, I had friends come over also and um they'd actually have like a little pony keg little kegerator type thing on their back and then people would be walking down with a with a you know an actual tap wow. giving you beer rather than you know cans and everything else but. that's pretty cool um i got some information here just on some of the players uh that came over from the japanese league uh you know, Matsuzaka, that, that's Matsuzaka who actually got, um, who got signed by the Red Sox. And apparently what's going on is between Major League Baseball and Japanese Baseball, when you try to draft somebody, like, you know, usually they're stars that come out from the Japanese league, you got to pay what's called uh, like a posting, a, a posting fee. And, and he got signed for upwards of, I got the information here. 140 million. Here. And combined, so he got a guaranteed $52 million and then a $51 million posting fee. Now, how does that fee apply? Is that a fee that comes to that specific team, or do they have to share it with the league? Or how No, there is no collective bargaining. There is no collective There is no sharing of anything. Um, so teams over there, if you whatever you make, you make. Okay. And you can either redistribute that through your team, or you can keep it for your corporation. For your corporation. And, and this is an interesting uh, note here, folks. Actually, in Japan, the teams are named after corporations. So does the corporation keep that money if they want to, or they can do whatever they yeah, want? Yeah, I mean, they can put it into sponsoring their product, or they can put it into um, the actual team, or they can put it into, you know, a new stadium, or whatever the heck they want. They can give it to their CEOs as bonuses, for all, they, for all I know. So let's just um, say that the, the Cebu Lions, they did really well that year. Yeah, Cebu was, is, is a, uh, like a, a train line down there, and there's also hotels and... Um, department stores that are Sabu also. They they own quite a bit of stuff. And on the on that league, it's not the Central League, but it's the uh, Pacific League. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, they pretty much can pay the most for any player, and it's probably a lot of it to do with the fact that they had Matsuzaka, and I, I think we overpaid for him. <laughs> Very interesting, interesting stuff. Um, and, and of course, uh, Jamie went to Wake Forest. Talk a little bit about your experience there. You batted, I mean, you batted 352 average, um, or 354 Korean batting average. At, at, you were the ACC leader, slugging percentage, home runs, RBI. Uh, you played third base. What was that like, your, your college career? And then also, if you could just touch up on, on how the draft happened. Uh, the, you got drafted by the... Uh, 
by the Arizona Diamondbacks in the third round, was it? Second round. Second round, second round. So you want to Yeah, I mean, it was great. I loved, I loved being at Wake. Um, at the time I came in, we had won the ACC tournament two out of the last three years, and I actually I was fortunate enough to win it my, my freshman year. Um, and since it's gone a little bit, it's got a little bit harder. Um, it's, it's hard for a private school mm -hmm. to really you know, bring in the type of talent that you really need, especially in the ACC. It's a very good conference. Um, it's just it's, it's pretty expensive, and it's very trying on families to, to have their, their children go there and uh, not get a full scholarship like they could at, at, you know, yeah. at a state school. Um, but yeah, it was great. I mean, I had a lot of opportunities, and thankfully I was able to play from, from, from jump and uh, did a lot better than I ever expected. And, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough in the third year to, to get drafted in the second round. Um, and I was just, like, they don't have, like, this this year or last year, I think they started, um, like, televising the, uh, the draft. The draft. Well, we didn't have that. We didn't even have, like, the podcast when, when I got drafted. Oh, my God. Um, so a lot has changed in the last, what, eight years, eight nine years? years. Yeah. Um, so I was just watching the ticker go by, and every single time somebody got drafted, it would refresh, and somebody else's name would come up. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, you start seeing everybody go, and you start seeing guys that you played with. Or played I'm sure with. you have an idea who would go first. Yeah, I mean, there, there, it was pretty obvious who was going to go in that top first round, and I, I, I knew that it wasn't going to be, I wasn't going to be in there, but I was expecting to go close to there after. Mm -hmm. And I got a call like 20 minutes before I got drafted from the Diamondbacks by uh, the area scout. The scout calls you up from Arizona <clears throat> 20 minutes before the draft and says, What is he saying? What goes through your mind? How excited are you? I mean, this is, I'm sure, a lifelong dream. I mean, it's of every 12 year old kid's dream or 10 year old kid's dream to actually play professionally, get paid to play a game that you love to do. Um, so when he said that they were going to take me, and then I had a call from my agent saying, "Yeah, this is going to happen." And then the agent gave you the numbers as far as compensation. No, that was time. that was a long time afterwards. Um, I mean, your family. The first, the first the rounders way. and the first top five picks are the ones that really worry about their money. Exactly. Um, everybody else is just. You know, understand they have to go through development there, there's process. yeah but there's you know there's a, there's a little bit of a grace period before you start you know talking about money but i knew that obviously it was going to be you know better money than i'd ever dreamed of mm -hmm. um then it was exciting it was the, it was something that i've been trying to do for a very very long time putting in many hours and sacrificed a lot of summer vacations and parents are driving me everywhere across uh, hell and back and um it was great I can imagine that and here's i think even more exciting than that, 2008, uh, you make your Major League debut with the Diamondbacks, July 22nd to be exact. And who are you facing? What's going through your mind? And, and you actually got to hit your first at bat? Yep. I think that's the second pitch. So take us through that. I, I got it. Like, who's pitching? How, uh, it, it, was, it was strange. I mean, I had, I had a really good year that year in AAA. I was sitting over 400 for pretty much most of the year. I got invited to the Futures game. I was the old, I'm the oldest person ever to be playing the Futures game at, I think, 26. So I was like the grandfather of all time for the Futures game. I ended up actually doing a, a batting con or a, a, a home run derby. Home run derby was in AAA All-Star game. AAA and you beat out. And I beat Hessman, Mike Hessman out, uh, who's actually in Japan now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was absolutely I mean, crazy. I, I faced Sean Marshall, who I'd faced at VCU in mm -hmm. college. I faced him four or five years in minor league baseball. Mm -hmm. I knew him pretty well. He was a lefty, which is what I thrive on. Nice. Um, so what kind of pitch did you get? Did you get it a little cutter in? Inside, cutter in? Or? And I rolled over it and thankfully pushed it through the six hole and got it through the third base and, and shortstop and got to first base. And I, it didn't even hit me until I got back into the dugout and then the inning was over and then I just sat there and it all kind of sunk in. But... It was, it was surreal. Was mom and dad in the stands? No. I mean, I, I found out that I was getting called up that afternoon. I showed up at the field, in my, my minor league field, at noon, and they were like, yeah, pack your stuff, you're going up. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I packed all my stuff up and threw it in my truck and drove up. Wow. Oh, it was good timing because, I mean, I, my air conditioning ran out and my truck was broken and I had it. I couldn't, I really couldn't afford to fix it for about three and a half, four weeks. So finally I get called up and now I can... I can have air conditioning when it's 105 in Arizona. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, Jamie, talk a little bit about your future, your outlook. Um, I understand, you know, you, you're still working with your agent about possibly getting back in. You, you're going through rehab right now on the one knee, both knees? I had them both done. The right one was the one that you didn't have done. Uh, I did the left one anyways because I had a time. 
Um, I went down to spring training this year with the Marlins and it kind of had some problems, so they sent me home and I took care of it. Um, hopefully it's better and I'm, I'll be I'll be healthy for the first time in years mm -hmm. this upcoming season and um, hopefully get a shot somewhere here um, and hopefully play well enough to either get back to the big leagues or get back to Japan. Awesome. And you're doing a little rehab, doing a little hunting off season? Yeah, doing a lot of hunting, <laughs> climbing ladders and, and walking on you know, up and down hills and chasing deer, but uh, <laughs> rehab also with my um, uh, my therapist, and they're getting stronger. I feel better than I have in many, many years. Um, so hopefully it'll it'll relate to you know good numbers on the field. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate Jamie D'Antonio stopping by, but before we close it, we're gonna do uh, just a quick. We're gonna ask Jamie what he thinks about going uh, into Game Six tonight. You got Colby Lewis. Uh, facing Garcia and Rangers, uh, Arizona, or sorry, Rangers and the Cardinals, uh, big game, and you actually faced Colby Lewis. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. I, I... Uh, he was in Japan for two years, one year before I got there, and the first year that I was there, and then he got, you know, he did really well, and he had the chance to come back, so he came back. Um, he's got killer stuff. He's, I mean, bulldog on the mound, great pitcher, go deep in the innings, will get ahead really early, and he just never kind of gives up. I mean, he's Good pitch, really good pitcher over there, and he's a great pitcher over here. So, who do you like tonight? You think Texas got it tonight, or is it going to be a game seven? I'm hoping it's not a game seven. I mean, I'd like to see Colby's thrown really well this, this postseason, and he hasn't gotten a win um, in the last two series. So, I'm hoping that he can last six, seven innings, give it the bullpen, let Ogano come in and get the, you know, and and pull it off right now. I mean, there's a lot of guys in that team that I've played against or played with, and I'm hoping they, they take it this year. So you, I'm sure you, when you watch the games, it's a much different perspective for you than the average fan. Yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of the guys. I played against them. I played with them. And uh, it's a little bit of bittersweet. I, bittersweet. I, I'd like to be playing. I can imagine. Um, and I'm not, unfortunately. But um, it's good to see those guys doing well. And uh, hopefully they take it this this tonight if, if it doesn't get rained out because it's supposed to be supposed to rain awesome well good stuff uh jamie dantone folks we appreciate him stopping by